Hi everybody, and welcome to Once Upon a Scarf. This channel celebrates the art of the vintage scarf, from luxury silks to bandanas, and zooms in close to the wonderful stories they tell. Today's scarf could hardly be more luxurious or more spectacular. It's Vittorio Acanero's famed fungi scarf of 1967 for Gucci. You may already know the story of its more famous sister, Flora. Princess Grace of Monaco made that one a legend. But hold tight, this scarf holds a story of some truly magic mushrooms and a trip featuring art, science, and even a truly badass 17th century woman who left everything to follow her passion. All of that in a square meter of silk. I'm the author of two classic books on vintage fashion, Secondhand Chic and It's Vintage Darling. I'm a huge fan of the luxury, affordability, and in this case, glory of nature in great vintage scarves. I'm so happy to share what I know with you. First things first, who was this scarf's artist, Vittorio Acanero de Testa? Fashion lovers know him as a name to watch out for on high-end silk, but he was so much more than that. Born in Casale Monferrato in Italy in 1896, he was a world-famous stage and costume designer, and above all, an illustrator. His work in children's books was enchanting. Fairy stories, animal stories, woodland tales, Shakespeare, and legends. The kinds of pictures that draw you in and allow you to dream. The perfect combination of lifelike renditions of plants and animals, and dreamy skies, castles, and supernatural doings that lift the earthly into the realm of fantasy. What little kid doesn't love that? But of course, like so many great, great illustrators and graphic designers, he also collaborated with the fashion industry. In 1960, Rodolfo Gucci, the son of the founder, commissioned him to begin designing scarves. At first, these tended to be the horsey, travel-y, military-style stuff pioneered by rival shop Hermes in France, because that's what the customers liked. Until one fateful day, in 1966, when a legend walked into the shop, Grace Kelly, she was looking for a gift for a friend, a scarf with a floral theme. There was nothing on hand. Can't be disappointing a star. So Gucci asked Acanero to design a botanical scarf with the greatest urgency, and he turned around and produced the legendary flora in one night. This was the first of many florals for Gucci, but this one's the icon issued and reissued again and again by Gucci in bags, shoes, clothing, with snakes, in monochrome, you name it. Well, you can find it in authentic and counterfeit editions, many more counterfeit editions, all over the internet. Speaking of which, before we get to the scarf itself, one quick digression about identifying old, original issue Gucci. Unlike Hermes, these scarves from the late 1960s have hand-rolled hems reversed to the backside. The old labels are two-colored, green and red, in script. Now, onto our fungi scarf. It was produced the year after Flora in 1967. All of the scarves in the greater Flora family, Acanero designed about 80 for Gucci in total, were keyed to specific seasons. Fungi is most definitely an accessory for autumn. The name means mushrooms, which of course are a feature of fall woodlands and menus. A different species reigns in the four corners and midpoints. We have chanterelle and porcini, scaly caps, and lethal amanitas and death caps. Tasty or toxic, they're bedded like bouquets in clumps of fallen leaves, oak, beech, and bramble, and interwoven with grasses, berries, acorns, and other seasonal sidekicks, which bring glorious color and variety to the overall scheme. Look closely, and you'll see that this scarf is not just about plant life. We also see, here and there, appearing like celebrities in a magical miniature set, all kinds of insects and a bird, and this kills me, creepy crawlies like a lizard, frog, and spider, which, come on, that is a mic drop moment for a scarf designer laying a huge spider down on some rich old Contessa's very neck. I'm sorry, this entire scarf is a mic drop. I think it's better than even its glorious forerunner flora. 
Why? For the simple reason that Vittorio Acanero is not just a genius illustrator. He's scientifically rigorous as well. Every one of these plants and animals can be firmly identified. We've got a yellow swallowtail here, a mayfly there, and even the spider has a species name. This is an Araneus diadematus, named for this cross-shaped diadem on its back. So how did Acarnero pull this off, besides being a great organizer of shapes, form, and color? Did he have a biology background as well? Not quite. He was smart enough to rely on prior masters for the fine details, drawing from the realm of botanical illustration, which has a heritage as distinguished as that of high fashion, but sadly gets much less attention. I'm not gonna go into too much detail here, but if we want to appreciate this scarf and the others by Acarnero, it helps to understand his influences. He clearly had access to some of the greatest early books of botanical illustration, the works of August Johann Russell von Rosenhoff. This German artist produced illustrated encyclopedias of the animal kingdom, specializing in frogs, insects, and spiders. The renderings are absolutely fabulous. Why not a little side by side? Here's Rosenhoff's yellow swallowtail. Here's Acaneros. Here's Rosenhoff's diadem spider. Here's our boys. But this is not meant to detract in the slightest from Acaneros' talent. It's just that the man simply couldn't recreate the entire natural kingdom purely from scratch. Over and over, for 80 spectacular scarf designs. Dragonflies just don't sit still for that long. While I have your attention on the world of scientific illustration, it's very cool to note that Acanero's go-to, von Rosenhoff, who was designing in the 1750s, himself took direct inspiration from one of the greatest botanical illustrators of all time, Maria Sibylla Marion. Who, holy cow, what an incredible woman. She shipped off with a baby daughter to Dutch Guiana on the South American coast in 1699, set up a table in her jungle garden, and did sketch after sketch of insects in metamorphosis. Her work created a tectonic shift in the field. It is very fair to say that this one, born in 1647, was the godmother of the Gucci look of 1967 and on to today. Heritage. Fashion brands use that word a lot, but in this case, with this scarf, it goes far deeper and to much more interesting places than even the most diehard Gucci fans might appreciate. This scarf is a masterpiece. I hope, thanks to this close-up, you'll look at Acanero's work with fresh eyes and fresh appreciation. I'll be coming back to him in future videos because it's so great spending time with this artist. And that's today's scarf story. Thanks so much for watching and please press the usual buttons if you'd like to see more.